Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel Anaka Design. I, um, <laughs> where to begin? I have felt a little ache in my heart because I haven't done any art journaling lately. So I thought, why don't I try to uh, do a weekly, you know, playing in the art journal kind of thing. So I pulled out this book. Oh, I should... Let me just show you. Uh, you've probably seen this book around. It's one of the Regis Digest ones. And I removed a bunch of pages and glued a bunch of pages together. And I began doing the Color Combo 2023 uh, challenge that um, oh, Tammy from Lou Fru Fru Studio? Lou Right. Anyway, <laughs> she started it and I was going along swimmingly and I loved it. Um, and I, I, you know, I ended up having to abandon it when I got busy and started doing the 100 day project and so on. I have a couple pages. See, I have masking tape here. I think I learned that from Carrie Griffiths. Carrie, the crafter. Is his name Griffith? Anyway, maybe a person shouldn't try to do three videos in one day. I'll probably be damn near incoherent before this is over. Anyway, he suggested putting masking tape across this little gutter so that if a person is using something wet, it doesn't seep through and, you know, ruin other pages. So you can say I have some ready to go. Then, because I didn't want the book to get cockeyed and, you know, really warped and so on, I started from the back. And this was more of the Color Combo 2023. And that's where I ended off. And then I realized this book is getting warped and distorted. And so I took out... Oh, let's see. Probably shouldn't be wasting your time with this. But I pulled all these pages out today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's obviously made the book more um, I guess it's reduced what I'm trying to say it's reduced the stress on the on the spine and, and the, the guts of the book I see that I so I went back you can see this was a retaped one oh I missed one here oh I thought I got them all anyway I retaped them because of course I had gaping holes in I don't know how long this thing will last um but you know, consider it another lesson learned. Don't try to hang on to that many pages because you're liable to have, create problems down the road. Anyway, so typically because the pages are big, I've only ever done a single page at a time. Like I've never, sorry, never done a double spread. <laughs> so... And I typically put a piece of parchment paper or some kind of protective paper between the page I'm working on and the one next to, or the, the other pages so that there's no uh, accidental gluing or transfer of paint or whatever. So basically to save some time, because I know this is a slow process uh, most of the time, I did some, I started the base. So I was lucky enough when we were in Colorado a year or two ago to buy a, um, the Rocky Mountain News. So it was a newspaper, a big one of those big tabloid type, you know, the gray, big, or they're called broadsheets, I guess. Um, so the, the, what they did was they, bound a month's worth of papers 
Now, I wonder if this was a daily. Yeah, it looks like it was a daily. So that's a lot of paper for a month. So I picked April 1920, and it is a gigantic journal. Let, let, it looks like a ledger, but big enough to accommodate a flat sheet of the oversized newspaper. Anyway, you probably didn't need to know all that. So I laid some of that down. Some dictionary page. A book page. And then I thought, well, okay, I don't really need to see this guy and his whatever it is he's trying to sell. I knew... Uh, oh dear, where did I put them? From this particular page, I wanted to include these four gals. So I separated them, and luckily there was enough space between them to separate them. I So far I've left this sort of this black, this grassy base intact. So I want them to be my focal point, or maybe at least some of them to be my focal point. I'm going to set them aside for now. I did also begin laying down some napkin paper because I have many, many beautiful napkins. I love how it gives an interesting, uh, interesting, but also instant layer. Um, the transparency, of course, depending on the pattern. So this gold one here is obviously more transparent than the animal print. But I'm thinking this is sort of all monochromatic, so I wasn't about to introduce, you know, purple or something. So I've just been thinking, well, okay, I can't, I don't want to do this all on my own and then say, well, uh, here I'm done. Um, so I went looking for some more stuff. This is probably not the right color but I'll keep it nearby. This is uh, some gel printing that I'd done ages ago. I haven't had that thing out for oh, months. Wrong color. Um, in my hunt, I found this doily, so that might be another way to get me some um, solid background because I don't care for those. I don't find those layouts that are too busy work for me. So I want some sort of, um, I want there to be contrast between my focal point and something else. So as I'm digging through all these bins, I find this strip, okay, napkin. Um, and I find these things, like I sell upholstery samples in my Etsy, also napkin bundles case you want to check those out. Anyway, I must have at some point cut these header strips off that have the holes or the staple marks. Uh, but of course, you know, if you know me by now, I'm not going to throw these out. I'm going to hang on to them, forget I have them, rediscover them, perhaps forget I have them again, and then ultimately use them in some fashion or other. So because these things are all neutrals, I, I may be able to work some of them in here as well. That's the wrong color. This could work, I guess. So again, without the camera on, I would be, you know, putzing around, trying trying this, trying that, but I want, and maybe for those of you who who haven't tried our journaling, are beginners to this whole, this whole endeavor, um, maybe, maybe you do find, well, I hope you find value, but um, maybe there's some benefit to you to hear somebody else's thought process and, and, um, Oh, you know, how decisions are made. I know I certainly appreciated that in the beginning when I didn't know which way was up. 
Um, now this stuff, some of this is quite thick. I guess I should have saved those numbers, but hey, I do throw out the odd scrap once in a while. So we'll see. Maybe this will give those ladies a place to stand or something. Ooh, that's fraying quite badly. Anyway, um, I did uh, intend to add a bit more napkin just, again, because, you know, I think sometimes, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. Um, at one point, I had one of my kids um, suffering from an autoimmune condition and as you know there really aren't any um there aren't any cures there aren't any quick fixes and as a population and as a people we always want or most of us are have been trained to expect that when we go to a doctor we when we seek out medical you know, intervention of some kind, we are going to come away with a, the cure, the fix. Uh, it'll be a prescription. Uh, because this is weak, I'm not going to put this glue straight on there. I'll put it on the page. So I kind of lay it down and see roughly, okay, so I'm going up to the end of the M and before the H and, you know, kind of close enough. And then if I have to give a little dabble, do you, you know, then I do. Anyway, we're used to going to get an answer. Well, in the case of an autoimmune condition, there are no quick fixes. There are no answers. And I remember this doctor saying, you know, when there are umpteen options for you to try, that is the perfect indication to you that there is no cure, that there is no, um, there is no one thing that works. Like, okay, so if you're, for instance, if you're diabetic, um, insulin is the answer, you know. Well, I guess now there are islet transplants, but insulin is the answer. Um, but if you have another condition and they say, well, you could try this or you could try this or here's this, um, then you know darn well that they don't have a clue. <laughs> And so that was our life lives for many years. I hate to cover up the word gossip. I lifted my camera higher than usual because I thought that, you know, it might be good if you could see a little more than, than normal. Um, yeah. So, so why did I bring that up? Because... There's more than one way to skin a cat. So you will see people put, for instance, case in point, you'll see people put down napkins with Mod Podge, uh, gel medium, uh, glue stick. You'll see them uh, put it, well, no, I was going to say you see them put it on the tissue, but probably that's not, I don't think so. That's not a good, that's not a good technique. So then it's up to you to decide, well, which of those prescriptions, <laughs> which of those techniques works for you? This is so white. Um, and yet it had been, or some of it had been dyed. Hmm. The, the hemming and hawing begins. I also brought this roll of wallpaper that looks like burlap, but I don't know. Let's lay one. Let's lay these girls down and see what we think. I want her in this corner because she's looking in, and you know I don't like my people looking out. So if I put this girl here, she's looking out. Who knows where? Over there, and that doesn't seem right. We want her here. Now, uh, this gal would probably be here. These two, it doesn't really matter that much. 
so I could kind of stagger and overlap them like so. Mind you, I better cover up that guy's legs because then it looks like, well, who's that? So maybe I need let's put a bit of this doily. May not be per oh for this I'll need our glitter glue. May not be perfect, but it will <clears throat> cover him up a bit. And if I don't like it, I can certainly put um what do you call it? A piece of that gold napkin over it. And when I look through my napkins, I just basically picked ones that were the right color family and not very uh, busy or decorative. I mean, you know, not, uh, you know, complicated patterns or anything. I like that gold one. Well, I like animal print. Every time I see a, a little girl, <clears throat> strangers in the store, little girls wearing animal print, I always say to the mom, it's never too early to start wearing animal prints. And they, of course, gush and agree because they wouldn't have their kid in animal print if they didn't love it themselves. It's just so, so, um, no, I don't know. Bold, gutsy. Oh, I, um, I'm i due for a new pair of glasses. Now, keep in mind that I've been wearing glasses since I was nine years old. When the school nurse came to, came to the classroom, small, <clears throat> small rural town, and did vision tests. I'm also old enough that public health nurses came and gave kids cod liver oil pills. I don't I think a lot of people just sort of, you know, maybe kept it in their cheek and spit it out the minute she was out of sight. But anyway, the vision test. So she sends a note home saying, uh, Hazel can't see the blackboard. So I, I take that as a life lesson because it tells me that as a child, and who knows, maybe even as adults, whatever we get used to, whatever we know, is what we believe to be the norm. How in my little nine-year-old brain would I have known that anyone saw anything differently than the way I was seeing it? You don't. So I think we kind of need to remember that sometimes. Um, with kids and grandkids and make sure that they get some, you know, they get the option. Uh, you see that I kind of, whatever element I'm using, I spread it around. I don't just have it appear once unless it's a focal point. Uh, now, can that, what I just said, be translated to adulthood? Probably, I'd have to think about a good analogy, but I think that would be a fair assumption. Let's see, I'm still trying to preserve the gossip. Anyway, so, glasses. I am due for a new pair. You know, the insurance company pays uh, for, well, part of the cost for glasses every two years. So, this is, this is the two-year year. year. And um, so because it takes me a while to find what I believe is just the right pair, I typically start early. So I've done a little bit of uh, looking around. And I can't remember the brand name. It was a designer thing. Um, maybe it'll come to me. Anyway, okay, I'll tell you, I uh, can't tolerate metal, so I need plastic frames. I also find that, uh, like, I don't like the, the little nose pads either. So with plastic, you have the integrated nose thing, and it has to be a good fit because you don't get that adjustment, blah, blah, blah. 
So I'm looking at these glass. Oh, and I like color. And even when I was a brunette, before I went all platinum, AKA gray, um, with my coloring and everything, burgundy, like wine burgundy, was a really good color for me. And I keep gravitating to that. I've had other ones, you know, in the meantime. Anyway, so I'm looking at the sort of the funky frames and, and I'm thinking, okay, this will be the first uh, frame I'm getting since, you know, the old going gray through COVID. Um, so I try on one of those frames and I didn't like it on me, but then of course, sometimes you, you can't prejudge and I don't, even though I can see myself in the mirror, which is an improvement over all those years that I couldn't. Um, I usually want my daughter to have a look-see and offer an opinion. She worked in an optical place when she was going to university, so she has a little bit of that background, plus I trust her judgment and, and so on. Anyway, I said to the guy that was helping me, I said, you know what? It seems to me that those frames on that particular wall in that section should be uh, worn. You would expect those kinds of frames to be worn by some bodacious broad living in a New York penthouse. <laughs> and that isn't me. <laughs> so I, I will um, have to get back there. Go, well, get to some other places and have a look-see because it's kind of important that I, uh, I do this, this thing, you know, sooner rather than later. But part of me thinks, well, they're only glasses. They are, unfortunately, I have one of those heads uh, or equilibrium or balance or whatever the, <laughs> the issue is. I, I'm not one of those people who can, you know, go to my drawer full of glasses and pick a new frame every day based on my, you know, mood or color preference or whatever. Because I have, you know, many frames. My prescription hasn't really changed um, well, certainly since the cataract surgery. Anyway, but I can't, like I get nauseated. I get, you know, the whole depth perception thing goes wrong. So might have, oh yeah, she had really nice glasses, but unfortunately she broke her, her face, her nose, when she fell down the stairs, when she miscalculated the depth of the, the, the step of the incline. So, I can't afford to have that happen. Why do I feel like I should include this Tweety piece here? And I don't have enough of it to do much. Okay, get rid of the napkin. I think we have enough of that. This is too close in color. Maybe this one that looks kind of ribbed would be good too. Oh, Lordy. <clears throat> Do I have to glue these women down and then work around them? Anyway, so one of these, and I, what I, since I've been shopping for glasses myself, I usually get the person helping me to take some photos because that's another way to to kind of get a more objective look at what is going on. You know, it's just like when you're working on a, on a collage or a painting or something, or even the same thing applies to um, home decor. You know, maybe you've rearranged the furniture in your living room and you think, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Take a photo off it and have a, you get a whole other perspective. This is going to add some bulk to this book. Too busy. Why 
couldn't I just look for some fabric? But again, I was digging for something else and I came across this. So now I feel compelled to use it. Because you know, overthinking is a no-no. She said while overthinking. Okay, I feel like I want to use this strip too. That white is kind of... Clearly, I just tore that off, so maybe I can just uh, sort of darken that up and not have to worry about trimming it. This, I'm uh, filming this on Sunday of the Labor Day weekend. Um, our harvest hasn't begun yet. Uh, we don't farm that much land and... Um, anyway, we're never, we're never first is basically the gist of it. Maybe I could have this. Will I get enough pieces out of it though? I want this to be like, to lead my eye into. Okay, so let's start gluing these girls down. So I'm going to. I should cut it. Put this right here under the gossip. I don't think this peels. No, I think it's an edge strip from paper. Um, so anyway, I don't know what you did all weekend. Of course, tomorrow is the actual holiday, I guess. But um, I hope that you took time. I want this to be edged to the edge of the page. I hope you took time for whatever it is that makes you happy. You know, that could be a meal out. Uh, definitely crafting for sure. Maybe some family stuff. No, 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 no. I should probably... You know, sometimes I just get so turned off by the idea of inking. But in this case, I think I have to break my own rule and do it just to help those gals out a bit. The weather has been good here. Um, you know, I think the some of the bigger farmers are going full full speed ahead, taking crops off, baling straw. And, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, our day will come. I did make a big batch of stew today, um, enough that I was able to freeze two containers. So that can be a harvest, a couple of harvest meals for us. You know, it's when you're, when you're the woman of the house... And you still have to, you know, help fuel things up and shuttle machinery from place to place and and um, and operate a combine and make sure there's food. I mean, don't get me wrong. I realize that Roy's role is much uh, bigger and more... <laughs> if it was up to me... I wouldn't be doing it. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, I'm not complaining, but I am stating a fact that pretty hard to be little Susie Homemaker. Sorry, I'm going to lift this up so I can see if she's sort of level. Oh, I see. I didn't get to the top of the page with those napkins. Um, I should stand up occasionally and see what's going on here. Anyway, um... Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to be doing his job. <clears throat> but it is kind of... Um, let me cover up this glue and ink. Looks like if I've done one, I have to do them all. Do I like that straight edge on her? Maybe so. Um, yeah, so I'll do some other... I'll try to do some other batch cooking before that starts. Um, 
you may have heard me say that that cooking is not my favorite thing whatsoever. I would far rather be crafting than cooking. But it's one of those necessities of life, so... I should try to get a little more enthusiastic about it, I suppose. But If it hasn't happened up until now, it may not. Maybe I didn't get that gene. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what did you guys do? You can write and tell me in the call in the comments. Did you <clears throat> did you go camping? Did you stay in your craft room, aka heaven? Um, what exactly did you do? I'd be curious to know. I always used to be, and I know that envy is a you know a, a slippery slope and a a dead end and not good for anybody. Um, but I always used to think, oh, those people that have campers and, oops, let's not tear her hat. Uh, campers and mobile homes, they're so lucky. It's like playing house. Um, this paper is so fragile. But then when I realistically think about it, and you live on a farm, you've got space, you've got the great outdoors. We even have a big dugout that's full of spring fed, spring fed water. Um, and we haven't had to leave home or fight traffic or, and what would I be doing there? I would still be inside crafting because I'm nuts. Okay, I want, I, I think you kind of figured out, hopefully, like I want this strip to be leading to each of these women. So who should, whoops, who should I put down next? Maybe her. Okay, I'm going to glue this gal down. And then hopefully... Well, I guess I'll glue them all down. Oh, no, I can't do that. Or I could just have the... I guess this could just butt up to... If I put her there... Okay, I'm going to bite the bullet and do this. So I have to make that piece last... Like, serve the purpose for the last two women. I have so many things that I want to do, so many things on the go, so many things that are, you know, kind of started. Um, and I don't mean that in a, you know, in a negative or critical way of, you know, of myself, because I'm doing as much as is humanly possible. It's not like I'm slacking off or anything. <clears throat> But it's just when you have so many things you want. Oh, I forgot about the fabric. Well, we're going to doing this first, and we'll see if something else is needed. When you have, whoops, all those um, ideas bubbling up, nothing is instant. That's the beauty. I guess. Well, that's the beauty. That's the curse. Uh, when it's handmade. It's not like, you know, hitting print or, or, you know, whatever. It's, it takes the time it takes. Okay, is that gal straight? Sorry if you can't see anything, but I do have to make sure she's straight before I apply some pressure. Okay, good, good, good. Um... 
yeah, so I have some slow stitching in the bedroom that, you know, is there as a reminder. Okay, you started doing this. Carry on, woman. Carry on. So if I... Hmm. I don't know. Can you see what's happening here? I could do... Whoops, don't turn it upside down. I could do like that to get to her. And then maybe a very short one there. Hmm. Huh. This way, if she touches those two, there's sort of a point of contact there. Do I let her head break that line? That leaves me very little, but I could just run it off the side there. Okay, that's what we're doing. Cut there. Glue there. There, there. There, there, Hazel. It'll be okay. That's sort of like that. Jerry Seinfeld, where there was that one character that always used to talk about himself in the third person. <coughs> and then I think George picked up that crazy habit. Maybe I, she should be almost at the bottom of the page. <coughs> we can turn to a, a cleaner side of this. All those pages that I <clears throat> ripped out of this book, because they're glossy, I will use them as glue pages. That's why they're not in the garbage. Whoa, it almost looks like that gal is stepping on her head. Probably think that through very well. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Now we have this girl. I could let her to her head intersect there. Or would this look okay? And a little smidge. Look at that. You can make something out of nothing. Or you can stretch your materials. <clears throat> I don't know how long I've been at this, but... I better finish up here. Oh, now I have to make sure these two are lined up. I better stand up for this. Okay. Glue this girl down. Jeez, I should have a wipe. Let me get, grab one right now before I transfer some dirty marks to. <laughs> Stretch that out. Uh, <clears throat> so what else am I working on? There's always fussy cutting to do. There's always ironing to do. There is uh, that slow stitching I was telling you about. I want to put, um, I need to put more stuff in my Etsy shop. So that takes time. They're, if they're physical items, it takes time to obviously make up packages and do the listings and all of that jazz. <clears throat> 
I um, have some books I want to take apart. I have I have videos to make. And, um, yeah. Oh, scanning to do. Digitals to make. My, uh, I don't have the graphic design skills that some other people do. But I think I have my own uh, style and my own... Whoa. kind of you know unique content okay I'm touch I'm having her touch there just a wee bit sorry guys Hey, cool. Cool, cool. I was going to, whoopsie, I was going to do a disclaimer at the um, at the start of the video saying, you know, I haven't done this for a while, blah, blah, blah. You know, it could be ugly, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, do not apologize to anybody for anything that you're doing. Get that out of your head. Do what comes and the the process sorry i have to lift this up and get a feel for what's missing the process of um evolution and uh, improvement and whatever it happens at its own pace it happens with practice and um, okay, and it's contrary, apologizing, even before I started anything, would have been counterintuitive <clears throat> and would have been, <clears throat> excuse me, would have been the opposite of the message I've been trying to convey, which is, there are no mistakes. <clears throat> there are no rules. Huh. Do I want to? Not sure why I'm asking you guys. Like, how would you know what I want to do? <laughs> I feel like connect, con continuing with this interconnected business. But which is the better color? Maybe that has more life to it. <clears throat> okay, that's the plan. I'm going to attach... Oh, let's, after my last video, if you saw that... <clears throat> well, you don't know which it is. <clears throat> Sorry. I guess talking too much for three videos worth. Anyway, I was having a heck of a time with my um, our, our Fabri-Tac. So I um, used acetone, and I use the pipette, dip it into the can, you know, suck up, fill the pipette, and then dropped it in here. And typically I take a, like a, a wooden, well, it's thicker than a skewer, so maybe it's a chopstick. I don't know. Anyway, some kind of a wooden stick and stir it. But I think that introduces a lot of air bubbles. So all I did this time was... Because really, the acetone just sat like on the surface, and I'm thinking, well, that's not going to do me any good. But I shook it, and of course, eventually it did start mixing. So this should uh, flow. I mean, it is flowing a lot better. Oh, I know. The last video I did, <coughs> excuse me, was the decorating the masterboard cart. 
uh, tags and cards. So I was showing, like I had assembled, some of the projects were sort of out of view as they were drying. And then I was, um, I brought them all into view to sort of recap what had been done before and during the video. <clears throat> Except I forgot the one that had, <clears throat> excuse me, the Nouveau drops. So then, of course, like a good girl, I cleaned up after the video, or tried to, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I stacked all those things up and put them away. Whatever happened to, um, to that project? Because, sheesh. But they had essentially dried, so that was... That was a good thing. So it is flowing better. <laughs> oh, wonder whose hair that could have been. Three guesses. Oh, for heaven's sakes, did I speak too soon? <clears throat> Lay this sucker down. I could <clears throat> to change things up a bit. <clears throat> to change things up a bit. I could do a skinny one for part of this. Do a vertical. Oh, that's the wrong side. Part of the label. Let's have the rattier side down. I don't know if I, I don't think I'm going to look for a word or like, isn't that what gossip is all about? Anyway, I will be attempting um, to do this art journaling you know, once a week or whatever, because um, it is, I think it helps. <sighs> it helps with using up materials, it helps with it becomes another expression of one's creativity. I need another vertical. Do I save the threads and use them? Looks better when they're a bit frayed. So let's just pluck a thread or two off. Don't cover her peplum. Anyway, it's 8.30 here. Mountain daylight time. And I need to finish this. Because <clears throat> I still need to write my column.
this long weekend or not, I still have to get it to the editor first thing tomorrow morning. And typically I like writing it on Saturday or Sunday, <clears throat> sleeping on it, looking at it with fresh eyes. Oh, this unravels the that way, not not the other way. Does anyone remember what warp and weft refer to? <laughs> nice. I can pull a thread or two out on the side. Whoa, where's my little pokey thing? Just so that's not such a hard edge. This, I wish I would have done this the opposite, but let me, sorry, you probably can't see. I didn't want that zigzag there. <clears throat> yeah, and mess this up a bit. Would have been good to do that before I glued it down. I risk making a hole in the in the woman's side. <clears throat> yeah, that helps to sort of mess it up a bit. I'll have to see how those things go if they end up needing um, <laughs> if they end up needing to be tacked down. Don't have enough fibers to do anything with. I'll just keep them in the book in case I come back to this. <clears throat> Excuse me, and add a I don't know, something else. If I do end up adding something else, um, you'll notice, you'll see it in the, the Instagram post that I do on the day that the video appears. So let's pull this out. Let's cover the, the recipes up. And see, whoopsie. And see if, if apologies are in order. You know, considering that I didn't know what I was going to do, other than the fact I wanted to include those, those women, <clears throat> I think it turned out uh, pretty good. <laughs> Can't cover up gossip. <clears throat> It seems like if I wanted to use this, I should have figured that out ahead of time and made allowances for that decision. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that if you don't have a um, an art journal on the go, that you consider uh, starting one. I will be doing a video, but who knows when, hopefully sooner rather than later, on... Um, altering a book and it'll probably be a, a smaller one than this you know so a person can just do um, maybe I should be moving this thing back and forth as you I'm talking here um, <clears throat> so that if a person just has a few minutes you know it's like um, when mag journals did the junk uh, junk journal July? No. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Junk journal January, junk journal July. She works in a very small format. 
Um, and I think that's so that it, it actually gets done. It's not overwhelming. It's not onerous on the, on the creator. So I'm going to, one of these days, I'll figure out what book I want to use. And we'll, uh, yeah, do a video about that. And you can be sure <laughs> that I'm not going to leave too many page, too many pages in it, because it's not worth that. Um, anyway, thanks guys. See you next time. Bye.